with the advances in generative ai and large language models it's become fairly simple to ask questions to documents in natural language but what if you have a time series based data set wherein you want to ask questions with time filters on it well here is where time scale the cloud platform comes in now you might be wondering what exactly is time scale well time scale is a time series database engineered specifically for fast ingest and complex queries on time series data it is built on top of postgresql and the key aspects of the platform are that it is basically optimized for time series related data you have full sql support it's highly scalable and you can perform complex queries in time scale so this is what i wanted to introduce you first the next thing that i want to introduce to all of you is time scale vector now what exactly is time scale vector well time scale has introduced a product called as time scale vector which is designed to efficiently store and query large scale vector data within postgres sql as a vector database so you can think of time scale vector as a vector database for time series data essentially if you are building rag applications and if you want to do time based filtering which is where time scale vector comes into picture the amazing part about time scale vector is that you have integrations with langchain llama index as well as base python the other unique part of using time scale vector is that it has support for most of the large language model providers which makes it very flexible for you to use any llm for your rag applications on time series data the good part about using time scale database is that you can basically sign up with a 90 day window you can create multiple instances of the vector database that you have in mind and you can play around with things and in the 90 day window if you feel like upgrading you can but this is what we have today so i already have a database up and running for this particular activity i would encourage you to first sign up on the time scale website secondly all you have to do is once you create the database and once the database is up and running you have to reach the connect your service section extract the username password so there is something called as psql and then you have a url given to you you just have to copy that and use it into the python script that i'll kind of take you all through now that you are well aware of what time scale vector store is i'll kind of take you through a real life use case in terms of how time scale vector store can come in handy for your use cases wherein you have to ask questions to your database in natural language and additionally ask questions to a time series database so i'll start off the entire activity with the installation section and the import section while the installation is going on one thing that i wanted to show you is I have my OpenAI secret key in the secret section of my Google Colab notebook. Additionally, I also have my time scale vector URL along with passwords engraved into my Google Colab session. So these are the two things that I'll require in the entire execution of the video today. So I'll kind of enable them so that they can be accessed in the notebook itself. So this is what I wanted to show you today. So let me go forward. So the installation is done. We are headed towards the import section. and i also wanted to show you the version of llama index as well so a lot of times a lot of functions keep changing because the core module is undergoing a lot of changes and modifications which is where i thought i'll specify the exact llama index version that i'm using so currently i'm using 0.10.12 so the demo that i'm creating today works on this particular version if there are changes in the entire function definition feel free to check the documentation for any modifications that happen in the llama index library okay now with that i'll set up the open ai api key as well as the time scale service url again if you go back to the initial part you require the service url which will be of the format something like this so you will have ts admin some username id and then you will have a password as well so this is something that you'll have to extract from your time scale database screen and open ai key is i'm assuming everyone has an open ai uh, api key as well so that is something that you will require so i'm kind of importing it through my google collab secret section itself so this is what i have there's one thing that i've not written here which is what i'll add here as well which is from google.collab import user data so this is something that was missing so i'll quickly run this cell to import the time scale service url and the open ai api key that i have so let me quickly run this 
Now that we are all set up to witness the magic of time scale, here are some things that I wanted to specify as well. The first thing that I want to specify is you can use time scale database as a simple vector database as well. But the additional capabilities that it has is where you can improvise and ask questions to your time series data. A key use case for time scale vector is efficient time based vector search. So a time scale vector basically enables this by automatically partitioning the vectors that you have by time. This allows you to efficiently query vectors by applying similarity to a vector store as well as time access. This is the uniqueness of using a time scale vector database. So what I will show today after giving you the background is say for example if I have a data set which is time based okay. So time scale database is basically an open source solution and the contributors basically make commits to an open source repository. What I've done is I've downloaded the commit history from the repository and for that commit history I'll ask questions based on time series that exist. Okay. Uh, all of this will make more sense once we keep moving forward. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll read the file which is the CSV file into a data frame DF. If there are any missing values I'll drop them. I will convert the entire data frame into a string data frame. So if there are columns with integers, all of those will be converted into string as well. And for the example in today's video, I'll only consider thousand rows, nothing more than that. So I'll basically consider the initial thousand rows. That is all that I want to look at in this example. So I'll quickly run this and I'll quickly go forward and show you the first three rows of my data frame as well. I have the unique commit value. I have the author information here. I have the date when this commit happened. I have the change summary and I have the change details of every commit that is there on this particular repository. Now the objective is based on what features have been released. Can I ask questions to this particular database in natural language and get results from that based on a time window. Well, if you are wondering how is this possible, I'll show it to you using this particular example. So let me move forward. Before I go over the next piece of code, I want to give you some background in terms of what we aim to do. The goal is to get the data from our CSV file into a format that we can kind of apply a retrieval augmented generation or RAG using Llama index. So the first part in this entire activity is we have to create nodes. Nodes essentially are the building blocks of Llama index. And we also need to isolate timestamp data to create UUIDs based on that timestamp for the time based search to be efficient. So here I've defined a helper function that helps me create a UUID for a node and associated vector embeddings based on its timestamp. We'll use this function to create a unique ID for every git log entry that is present. Okay. This particular function is where I want to add a level of filter by splitting the email of the git entry and extracting the first name of that particular person. So this is where this particular function comes into picture. The date that you see here is in a specific format, which is not very conducive in terms of creating like a unique ID out of it. So here is a helper function where I define a dictionary to firstly map month abbreviations to actual months. So essentially I convert this particular date column into a unique timestamp column. So this is something that is taken care by this particular function. I am again laying a lot of stress for the UUID part because this UUID part that we are kind of speaking about is the one that we will be using for time partitioning. So all the time based rags that you, so all the time based queries that we want to perform, all of this is possible provided we have the right UUID in place. So I'll quickly run these two cells to import these functions in memory. Okay. Next what I do is I create a function to create a text node for every git log entry. So I'll quickly run the cell to kind of carry out all the manipulations so that we are able to create the text node as well. So I'll quickly run this. Now I want to kind of apply the entire processing that I've done with the create node function into the data frame that I have. So which is where I go over every row 
and I create a node for every row and save it into a list. So I'll quickly run this and I'll show you the first element of the node as well. So here I have a text node which has a specific ID. It currently has no embedding, so if, which is where you have embedding equal to none. You have the metadata which contains all the information that we have used from the data frame itself. Now all of this data, I have to create an embedding for it, which is where now I reach the embedding section. So if I have to query something using a large language model, I have to convert that piece of information into an embedding, which is what I achieve using this piece of code. So from llama index dot embeddings dot open AI, I import open AI embedding. I create an instance of open AI embedding and I go over every node and the metadata that is present all of that will be converted to an equivalent embedding. So I'll quickly run this cell. So this process may take a while depending on the data set size you have, which is where for our use case, I chose a very small subset of the data that I had. So our embeddings are ready. I'll show you the embeddings as well. So I'll quickly run the cell. So this is the metadata that we had in the node. And this is the corresponding embedding that has been generated. Just to show you the size of the embedding as well, what I'll do is I'll quickly create a new cell. And the size of the embedding is 1536. So it's basically a 1536 dimensional vector which is used as an embedding here. Okay. Now I have the embeddings ready. All I have to do now is I have to load all of these embedding nodes into a time scale vector vector store, which is what I define using this piece of code. So I say time scale vector store dot from underscore params. The service URL, if you remember, is the one that we had created or used in the initial section. I create a table name as well. I create a time partition variable and I give the time delta is seven days. And then I add all the nodes. So this is what I'm trying to achieve using this piece of code. Again, the time taken for this entire process is totally dependent on the amount of data that you're storing in the time scale vector. So let's wait patiently for the entire result to populate. So it's finally done. Now we can start querying our time scale database as well. Now this is the question that I want to ask. What's new with timescale DB functions? Based on the commit history, you will have good amount of logs where every commit history will have some amount of features with respect to timescale DB functions. I want to filter those out with respect to a date range as well. Okay. Now just imagine what I'm doing here. I have an entire set of commit histories. I want to ask questions to the commit histories based on time intervals. And I want to generate some amount of responses which are similar to the question that I'm asking. Okay. So what I do is I define a variable called as query string. I have the embedding model ready and I convert this particular query string into a query embedding. I define a start date and an end date and also a time delta which I'll utilize later on. So I basically want to understand the commit histories and the features of timescale functions between these two windows. That is 1st of August 2023 to 30th of August 2023. Now here is where I query the database and I get the result. So what you will see out here is the result. And this is the result that we have. It has given out multiple node entries, which are similar to the question that I'm asking. So I'll go over them one after the other. So here we've been able to filter out results, which are between 1st August to 30th August, 2023, where the commit history is based on the different set of features or functions that have been added to the timescale database. So these are the results that you can see on your screen as well. So it's doing a fabulous job in terms of filtering out the time series aspect of where the data resides and it's able to accurately give us responses based on the embeddings that have been generated. And there is like a similarity score calculated for the time series vector along with the actual embedding vector as well. Now, so far what we've been able to retrieve are multiple nodes, which are very similar to the query that I've generated. We've not seen actual rag in practice, right? 
So let me go forward and show you actual rag implementation with this piece of code. The first thing that I'll do is I'll first define the index which is what you see in the variable index. Then I create a variable called as query engine. Now here in the query engine, I kind of identify index as a query engine and I basically use time scales, time filters to constrain the search to a relevant time range by passing our time filter parameters as vector underscore store underscore keyword arguments. So that is something that I pass here. Then I have my query string that I pass. Now given for this particular query string, I've also defined the upper bound and the lower bound of the time interval that I wanted to consider. I query the result and I save the response into the variable response. And finally, I get the response. So I ask the question, what's new with timescale db functions? And the output that you are seeing right now is the rag output, which is filtered by the time range that we've inputted. So if you take a step back and if you realize what we've been able to create, we've been able to create a system where we are applying rags on a time series based data. So whatever questions that we have with respect to our data, we can ask questions to it in natural language and we can also apply a filter in terms of a time series window that we want to look at the output as well. Before I conclude the video, I wanted to share across a good news with all of you. My friends at Timescale are giving all of you a three month free sign up window wherein you can sign up using the link in the description and you can enjoy Timescale for three months. So this is all that I had in today's video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like the content that I create on my channel, it would be super motivating if you can press the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to be notified for amazing videos on data science and machine learning. Thank you so much for watching the video.